Married at First Sight Australia. Episode 18. In this episode, we saw our couples receive an invite to the cinema. They had cinema tickets for some sort of special screening. I'm sure they knew there was some sort of catch. They just couldn't work it out. But in this episode, I'm just going to concentrate on two couples. Bryce and Melissa and Beck and Jake. Starting with Bryce and Melissa. Did you see Melissa's face? When one of the families turned around and said that they've watched all three commitment ceremonies. Did you see Melissa's face? Not so much Bryce, but Melissa. Shock horror. She knows everybody's watching. Everybody's watching. And how she's looking on screen, looking miserable, defeated, self-esteem, extra low, all of that. It's all coming to the surface while she's sitting there. She's feeling very embarrassed by it all. I loved how Bryce's mum told him off. She felt embarrassed with all his overreactions and his behaviour. But when talking to the camera afterwards, he wasn't concerned. Believe me, if my mum had talked to me like that, I'd be very concerned. She's seen something I'm not seeing. She's seen something I'm not seeing. But you, with your arrogantness, don't see shit. Your head is so far up your ass, you can't see shit. Even with the matchmakers, you still don't take their advice. You think you know better. Absolutely embarrassing to watch. You are absolutely embarrassing your family. Yes, you are. Because you are a representation of your family. And if that's the way you behave, just think how they look, let alone how Melissa looks, standing by you. Absolutely embarrassing. When it came to Melissa's mum asking the question about what happened at the gym, I thought to myself, didn't you have a better question to ask her? What the hell's the gym got to do with this? Ask what's going on with your daughter. That's what you need to be doing. What's going on there? I thought, that's a lame question. Absolutely lame question. You let him get away with murder. You let him get away with murder. Because I would have went in on him. Let alone my daughter. I would have gone in on him. I don't care whether his, whether his parents are hearing me or not. He would have got his, my size nines up his ass. Coming back to Bryce's mum. Oh, I love her. I love her. She's my kind of woman. Yes. Call it as you see it. Call it as you see it. What she said next was about him ranking Melissa as number four. What possessed you? That's what she said. What possessed you to do that? Even if you had to lie, put her at number one. That's really what she said. Even if you had to lie. Oh, dear. What a bloody mess. Bryce's mum then goes on to say, I truly believe that all three experts picked your personality. Oh, they definitely had him to a T. They definitely had him to a T. She said he needed to listen. Take advice. He needs to listen. And then she turned around and said, that's where his immaturity comes in. His immature. She had him right. The dad agreed too. As she said, he's at an age. He needs to grow up. Yes, he needs to grow up. He's a big kid. And she continued to say, him puffing up his chest like the big rooster. He needs to stop that. Because you've got, you got Melissa sitting beside you, wanting to support you. 
but feeling totally embarrassed. Yes, embarrassed. And to end it, she says, in all honesty, I don't know why she's still sitting next to you. Yes, that's what mummy said about her own son. Call it as you see it. His mother gave him what for? Yes, I love her. I love her. I love her. And again, when he was talking to the camera, he tried to be very critical about his mum, saying that she hasn't seen the full story. So as, a fa as far as he's concerned, it's going through one ear and coming out the other. You see, arrogance. Arrogant, arrogant, arrogant. Ugh. I can't deal with somebody like that. No, 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 no. And then when Melissa's sister was speaking, she was very concerned about how Melissa was and she didn't like watching her face, her reactions, and she just wants to make sure she's okay. But when I look at Melissa's family, Melissa's like her mum. That's what I see. Melissa's exactly like her mum doesn't say much the sister had more of a voice I would say there but the mum like mother like daughter I can see where Melissa gets it from it was slightly disappointing to see when speaking to the camera Melissa said that her mother doesn't feel she's happy and that she finds very disappointing is upsetting that's what she said she respects her mum's opinion, but for her mum to see that, it upsets her. Now, when they got back to the apartment, Melissa turned around and said she was disappointed that all her family could see was the sadness. But when it comes to her making her own decisions, she really didn't care whether they liked Bryce or not. I'm old enough to make my own decisions. But really, are you? You haven't done a good job so far. The 12 year on and off relationship you had with the ex-boyfriend. You haven't made any good choices, have you? And here we go again. You're with somebody that you shouldn't be with. Again, a bad choice. So really? Do you really trust your own judgment? I'd rethink that. And Bryce, when talking to the camera, said he don't really care what anybody else thinks, what the matchmaker thinks. He doesn't care. It's all about him and Melissa. As long as Melissa accepts me, he's good. These two are a waste of time. Absolute waste of time. She's a mug. He's a control freak. This relationship is toxic. I noticed when he talks to her, about how he's feeling and he's never been happier he says he keeps fiddling around with his ring when I see people do that that's a nervousness that's a lie he's telling his body language says it all I'll say no more the next people we saw come for their cinema invite were Rebecca and Jake. Now, before I start on them, last night, supposedly, them two had an argument. It was something to do with Rebecca swearing at him and he didn't like the language. So they fell out. Not too sure what the argument was about in the first place, but that was the gist of it. He didn't like the swearing, so... It got heated. So this is the temperament they're coming into the cinema with. With the argument from the night before still hanging in the air. They started their relationship on a clean slate the week before, if I do, if I do remember. And now it's gone downhill again. Let me tell you, this is not going to improve. It is not going to improve. This relationship's going to be a roller coaster. And as far as I'm concerned, 
Jake, do yourself a favour and save yourself all this pain and get out. She is not worth your time. So fast forward, these two eventually arrived at the cinema in their seats, ready to see the performance, only to be met on screen by their families. That was a shock. That was a shock. For Jake, he was nervous. You could see the nervousness in his face. Oh, dear. Oh, dear me. Rebecca put on a face for everybody like she normally does. Like I said, she reminds me of Ice Queen that left yesterday. What's her name? Jamie. Very much the same look. The families then told them that they had seen their last three commitment ceremonies. Yes, the last three. Oh dear, if you could see Jake's face. I know Rebecca doesn't have an expression. Because she don't really care. She thinks she's always in the right. She don't really care. When Beck's mum asked her how she was doing, she started going through the wedding day itself and how Jake shoved his tongue down her throat and how he objectified her. All that. Yada, yada, yada. And then she started to get a little tearful as well at the same time, which got mum on the back foot. Oh, she knows how to play the game well. Oh, she does. Ugh, dear, the manipulation is real. I did not like the way the mum was going in on Jake. Her daughter was behaving like butter wouldn't melt. I did not like to see that. If she could see the whole of this series and see how her daughter behaved, she'll be eating her words, believe me. She would be eating her words with the embarrassing situation her daughter has put her in. Becca's mother continued to badger Jake. Yep, she continued. I had enough of her already. Another one. Like mother, like daughter. Beck also agreed with her mum and started criticising Jake next to her about how he doesn't listen and he misses the words. Something like that, she said. And then he started to give a list. So I missed the words. I'm Mr. Boring. I suck the life out of you. And that's where Jake's mum stepped in. Yes, Jake's mum opened her mouth and said, if anybody's sucking the life out of anybody, it's her sucking the life out of you. She was talking to Becca, sucking the life out of him. Jake is not the same person that he went into the experiment as. She can see her baby boy having the life sucked out of him. Yes, she could. And after hearing that, Becca's mum decided to pipe up again. She weren't happy with what she just heard from Jake's mum. Oh, no, she wasn't. No, no, she wasn't. Her daughter can do no wrong. And with her being very opinionated, we saw Jake's sister try to intervene as well and talk on top of her. She hasn't had the opportunity to speak yet. But Becca's mum wanted to be heard. She wasn't hearing any of it. Doesn't that sound like somebody? Hmm. Becca. She likes her own voice, doesn't she? Same with her mother. I'm going to say it again. Like mother, like daughter. And as Jake said himself in front of the camera, she's a chip off the old block. Yep. She's a chip off the old block. It makes sense why Becca is the way she is. That's what Jake said. Those were his words. Those were his words. And I have to agree. The two families continued to talk over each other. Yep, it became about them. The next thing you saw was Becca saying, I came on here to find someone. And then Jake turned around and said, 
What? And I didn't? And then Becca turned around and said, You weren't even trying. How dare she? How dare she? From the word go, she didn't even try. The sour puss. His answer on the back of that was like, Really? Really? And then he had to sort of quiet the room by telling everybody to quiet, give me a minute. He needed to say something. Then he started talking about how he found Becca rude. He can't deal with that. He's not used to that behaviour. She's rude. Miss Sourpuss is rude. He was still nice to her by saying, don't get me wrong, Becca's a nice person. She's just not for me. That's what he said. That's what he said. I wouldn't have given her that compliment. I would have told her about herself. I really would have. And with that being said, it was a mic drop. He said, I'm done. That's what he said. I'm done. Last words from his mum was, she can't wait to get him home. They miss him. He said he missed them too. And at the same time, she said, he's never been one to give up. That's not you. So for him to give up the way he's given up, that says a lot. That says a lot. She has pushed his buttons too many times. You should have let that one go from day dot. She was a waste of time from the minute she walked down the aisle. Waste of time. Miss Sourpuss needs to go. And just to add, to see two families go head to head like that tells me everything I need to know. It tells me everything I need to know. So on that note, this is where I'm going to leave it. If you like what you heard, please like, comment and subscribe. Till next time.